The bike industry, scientific research, and us here at GCN Tech are constantly telling you guys at home that the aerodynamics of your bike are more important than the weight of it. So to put that to the test and see if aerodynamic fairings such as these are actually worth it and make you ride faster, we're gonna do some experiments to see if aero fairings are the future or just a complete waste of time. The reason we got thinking about this is because many years ago, the UCI banned aerodynamic fairings in a bid to preserve the aesthetic of the sport. But in recent years, brands have been increasingly including aerodynamic fairings sneakily on their bikes, which, well, amateurs like us, where the UCI has no jurisdiction, can benefit from and potentially be faster. Think the interesting, intriguing water bottle on the Colnago TT bike or the wind deflectors on the latest Bianchi or any triathlon bike. Or these, the aero water bottle and aero storage unit fitted to my Orbea Orca Aero, which Orbea say save three watts when cycling at 50 kilometers an hour, which might not sound like much, but if pure speed is what you're after, then every little helps. But we're also gonna take things a step further still to see if extreme aero fairings can make it even faster again. Here at our official test circuit, we're gonna conduct the tests. Three to get through. First being my bike with one water bottle in its normal setup. One with the Orbea aero bottle and aero storage unit. And then we're gonna take things to the extreme with an aero windscreen like this. Think along the lines of MotoGP, but considerably less precise and expensive. Now the theory here being that the aero windscreen is gonna direct the wind up and over the rider because it's the rider that creates the majority of the aerodynamic drag, which is acting to slow you down. But, um, well, is there one way to find out? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's a big fat no. That is not gonna be more. If that's more aero, I don't wanna say I'll eat my hat because I don't wanna eat my hat. But, but, yeah, I'd look, no. Well, I hope it's more aero because I want to see you do a time trial with this thing on your bike. Well, if it is more aero, I'll do a time trial with it. It might be faster. If you're wondering why aren't we testing these aero fairings in the wind tunnel, well, that is something we would like to do in the future. It's just we don't always have the time or the resource to be able to do that. But the more of you that subscribe, well, the more we can do those things and head off to the wind tunnel again with the bike tailor. But we also want to try some fairings outside here in the real world because when you start attaching big fairings to your bike, it actually can have a very big handling implication in terms of making your bike less stable and harder to ride as you wrestle with it in the wind. So let's see how Alex gets on. I'm going to ride four laps of odd down cycle circuit replicating the power I can ride at, the body position I'm cycling at, and then I can recreate that for each of the different test setups. Right, let's get to this. Three, two, one, go. So it's common within cycling that we say it saves this amount of watts at 45 kilometers an hour. And people often go, that's th pro speeds. I never ride at that kind of speed. It's not relevant to me. Well, the thing to remember is it's not the speed. It's not the riding speed, the 45 kilometers an hour. It's the air speed. So that could be you riding at 30K an hour or 25K an hour with a 20 kilometer headwind or 30 with a 15 kilometer headwind. And once you factor in that it's airspeed, it actually becomes a lot more common than you would think to be hitting a 45 kilometer an hour airspeed. Right, the results, Ollie. Well, we'll have a little chart up on screen so everyone can see the data and make sure that we were actually riding the same average power. But our baseline run was the normal bike, no aero fairings, normal bottle, normal bottle cage. We had a time of 10 minutes and 48 seconds. We then added the fancy optimized aero fairings, specifically designed for that bike, I'd like to add. And that saved us eight seconds, even over that short test run, which was impressive. They were actually faster. Yeah, I like eight seconds over that short period of time has wowed me. Could I feel the difference when I was out on the bike? Not necessarily, but the stopwatch never lies. And then, um, in addition to that, we added on the makeshift windscreen Aero fairing. Am I eating my hat, Alex? <laughs> your, your hat is safe. Nice. So 
the added on aero windscreen knew it was then eight seconds slower knew it than the aero storage I'm surprised it's not more it so, looks ridiculous <laughs> so an aerodynamically optimised fairing is faster an unaerodynamically optimised garage door which you've yeah. stuck on the front of your bike is surprisingly not faster yeah i guess when you say it like that it feels kind of obvious but i think there's some important takeaway things to go through here i didn't personally think over that short period of time the optimized aero fairings for that bike would have shown a difference but they did which is really interesting and you to weren't see. averaging 45k an hour no i was riding at 221 watts which is about 30, 32 kilometers an hour, somewhere there. Yes. Now, if you extrapolate that up and you had those aero fairings on your bike for even just a 30, 35 kilometer ride, you could potentially go about a minute faster for riding at the same power. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier in the video, there, although you were riding at, say, 30 odd K an hour, there was some significant wind up there on the test track. It was very meaning windy. Meaning that you were definitely getting to air speeds of sort of 45 kilometers an hour, yeah, especially with a, the headwind. That's a really valid point. But what, one that you've already highlighted, the aero windscreen I put on the front was in no way optimized for what we were trying to achieve. Whereas I think if you spent time optimizing that setup in the same way that these have been carefully designed, I think there is scope to significantly increase your speeds. I think we should actually investigate some fairings more and I think we should do it in the wind tunnel. So well, gonna... you've been to the wind tunnel and looked at a rear fairing, actually. Well, inadvertently we did. I'm going to wait for this to go. It's the police. It's the UCI coming to arrest us for our illegal aero fairings. <laughs> now, you've actually been to the wind tunnel and investigated lots of different things. One thing you did find is that using a large rear saddlebag almost added a small benefit. Well, yes, and this was unexpected for us, and other people have tested this and found the exact same thing. Now, what we theorise is actually happening is that by putting a large rear, rear saddlebag on, which doesn't look aerodynamic... Not in the slightest. ...is actually creating a sort of rear fairing as a sort of continuation of, of the rider's thighs and bum yeah. and back, a bit like a sort of wasp's tail in nature. And that is something that we actually see in motorbike design, if you think of superbikes, yeah. the, the, the saddle of a motorbike is designed to have that long fairing on the back of it that comes to a point yeah. to make the rider's back and bum more aero. Now, at the moment, yeah, a saddlebag is sort of doing that even when it's not optim optimally shaped. So if we made a fairing for the rear of a bike that was more optimally shaped, yeah. I think there's a big gain to be had there. I still think there's a good gain to be had at the front with a more optimal sort of cone-shaped fairing rather than <laughs> you're just kind of shed. Do you know what that plastic screen is actually designed for? What? It's designed to go in front of a child's seat and keep the wind and rain off of them. Huh. <laughs> but it works visually. It served its purpose. But I guess it highlights why fared recumbents are also so fast. Well, 100%. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if you'd like us to try and investigate some homemade fairings that are a bit more optimal than Alex's um, and do it in the wind tunnel and see if we can actually get some gains. Well, you know what to do. Like and subscribe and then we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. I'm going to go bolt that windscreen onto your time trial bike. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>